Okay. Another nice guy mistake is repressing their sexuality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I said, I did that a lot. And I promise you, there's two things that tends to happen when you repress your sexuality. And this goes back to the early stuff of nice guys believing, you know, I've got to become what other people want me to be, to be loved and liked. And I got to hide whatever it is about me that, that makes people respond to me negatively. So that's usually hiding their needs and hiding their sexuality. But needs and sexuality are pretty big deals, right? They don't, you can't hide them. You can't just push them down and they disappear. So by hiding our sexuality, there's a, there's a number of side effects. Uh, one is it's got to go somewhere, and it usually goes kind of dark and underground, which means a lot of guys, nice guys I work with, have, I don't know, perversion is the right word, but a, a number of sexual issues, like you know, looking at a lot of porn um, and you know, getting caught up in kind of the whole dark side of sexuality, hiding their sexual behavior. Right. Uh, whether that's going to massage parlors, picking up hookers, um, or just, I said, porn is so common with nice guys. So there's one thing. It goes underground. Another problem is, is it robs us of our, of our life vitality. Our sexuality is an essential part of who we are. And if we put a big lid on it, we're putting a big lid on our, on our core energy source and something that makes us really attractive to women. And that's one of the core things that changed for me when I started dating in my 40s and 50s. Not that I got better looking or got more hair or got more buff. Yeah, I got more comfortable with my sexuality. So right. I wasn't hiding it. But um, so another problem is if a man is repressing his sexuality, he's, he's re as he interacts with women, and if he, if he thinks women, like I did, think that sex is bad or that men that hit on them are bad because they just want sex, and he's trying to be the good guy, the nice guy, not the guy that you know, has a sexual agenda, he's so passive and pleasing and indirect, there's nothing to turn the woman on. Right. And so you know, maybe at some point, if finally he asks her out, she goes, what? Why, you know, why, why would we go out on a date? You know, and yet she said, well, because I like you. And she said, well, I've never even thought of you in that way. Well, the reason she never thought of us in that way is because we've, we've got such a lid on our sexual energy. It never turned her crank that, that she might want to have sex with us. Um, and, and so we, we've got to have that sexual energy. I tell nice guys, or I tell the men I work with, that in this kind of rever reversing the nice guy logic, Women don't have sex with a guy because they've gotten to know him. Mm -hmm. They get to know the guy they want to have sex with. True. Typically, a woman knows within 30 seconds if there's a possibility that she's going to get naked with you. And mm -hmm. so all of our going slow and hiding our sexual energy, hoping that, you know, maybe in three months she'll think we're a great guy and want, want to get naked, ain't going to happen. She, right. that, that window already opened and closed a long time ago. We've just spent a lot of time and money and energy. But here's the other problem of, of, of hiding our sexual energy or repressing it. You tend to get messed up women that, yeah. you know, because yeah. you'll get women that because they've been treated badly by men and maybe been abused or violated, the nice guy is so much different. You, you'll get women that actually are drawn to that. But the problem is they're drawn to it because ah, finally, a man that doesn't want to have sex with me. Right. And so, you know, you're getting a woman that, that isn't looking for sexual connection. She's looking for an escape from it because she's right. been used and abused so much. So I'm not saying men, you know, you don't walk up to a woman necessarily and say, hey, I want to pee in your ass. Now, right. I, I read that Mark Manson's book model that his friend <laughs> used to do that. Um, if it works, do it. You know, if it's authentic for you, do it. Sure. No problem. But if you're not repressing your own sexual agenda, you know, and the yeah. reason we talk to women is because they've got boobs and we're hoping to see them naked and maybe have their boobs in our mouth. And women know that they know exactly. why we talk to them. You yeah. know, they, they, they know our intention, even though we think, Oh no, they don't know why. I'm yes, they do. And women tell me they know that. So they do. So if you're hiding all that sexual energy, nothing to turn her crank, nothing to move it forward. But if you're not repressing your own sexual energy, you're going to be more playful. You're going to be bolder. You're going to take more risk. You're going to touch her more. You're going to tease and be playful. You're going to tell her what to do. And, and, and all of that creates this chemistry that really turns women on. And you're going to look confident. And I tell guys, when a man 
interacts with a woman confidently, even if she just sees him across the room and he's talking and engaging and he's got good posture and he looks good, he's comfortable in his body, he's put together, that confidence that they see, and this is true, it triggers the exact same brain chemicals of arousal in a woman's brain that a guy would experience if she lifted her shirt and showed him her tits. Yeah, It's yeah. exactly the same. We guys don't have to ponder the tits and think, huh, do I like those? Do I like looking at them? No, we get a surge. With Mother Nature wired, we get a surge of chemicals in our brain that right. that's now like, we go dumb. You know, that's all we can think about is, you know, how can I get those tits in my mouth? It's like, that's all we can think about. That's what we feel. When right. women see a confident man, they have the exact same kind of, they go dumb and blind as well going, what would it be like if he was holding me right now? And that's what they start thinking. And they get dumb right. too, actually. So guys, you don't have to be that best looking guy, but you can't repress your sexual self. Again, you don't have to come on hard. You don't have to be a perv about it. Just don't hide it. Don't repress it. Don't pretend it's not there. If you're talking to a woman, own it with yourself. You're talking to her because you hope you're going to see her naked. And, yeah. and, and be okay with that. Learn to be okay with that. And I had to, actually had to do a lot of therapy around that to dump a lot of my sexual shame from going up in a very fundamental Christian church. Just you know, bombarded with sexual shame. If, if you lust after a woman's breast, you're going to hell for eternity. I mean, that's what I was wired to believe. So I had to go work on that. And, and if you got a lot of sexual shame, if you've got a lot of sexual acting out, you got a lot of sexual compulsions, go, there, there's groups out there, even online. Go work on that stuff. Get, get good with yourself. Get, get clean around your own sexuality. And it's one of the most attractive things about you for women.